And when I was a graduate student in the field, um, taking birds out of the nets, these pitahuis are J-sized birds with very strong, sharp beaks and big claws, and they can easily scratch your hands. And when I was taking them out of the nets as a graduate student, they scratched my hands and really hurt. So the first thing I did was I popped my finger in my mouth and licked my cut, ran off to the next net, and then my mouth began to tingle and burn. And until it happened a second time to one of our other researchers, um, I, we didn't realize what happened, but then we put our stories together and we started to suspect that actually the, the toxins came from the birds and not something else that we'd been touching. And when we went to ask the local folks about it, they said, oh yeah, those, those birds are poisonous and you shouldn't be touching those. <laughs> and so, so back when I was a graduate student, we started working on these birds and uh, we teamed up with folks at the National Institutes of Health. And uh, after a couple of years of research, we were able to isolate and identify uh, the compound that's responsible for the toxicity. And this is it here, it's called, it's called vitrecotoxin. Um, it's in a, a, a family of compounds known as vitrecotoxins. And they're steroidal alkaloid neurotoxins. And they're steroidal because they have this steroid-like base. They're alkaloidal because they have this basic nitrogen that's contained in a ring structure that gives it the properties of an alkaloid. And it's a neurotoxin because it binds to voltage-gated sodium channels in such a way that when the channel is, is uh, activated and opened, it holds it in the open conformation. And what this does is it prevents the cell from being able to, to pump the sodium to one side of the, of the cell and reestablish the ionic potential that's needed for that cell firing. And so basically this incapacitates nerve and muscle membranes and what caused it to exactly what caused the numbing and tingling sensation that we felt. But in higher dosage, it can actually cause paralysis and death. Um, and this has been known. Um, gram for gram, the betrachotoxins are among the most toxic natural substances known, more toxic than curare or strychnine. And in everything that's been studied basically to date, with the exception of one species that I'll talk about, um, they all seem to be sensitive to the toxins and they seem to be poisoned by the toxins. So basically everything with a central nerve system that uses voltage-gated sodium channels um, is poisoned by, this, by these compounds. Now, betrachotoxin means frog poison, and so these toxins were previously known and identified, especially um, in the Phyllobates poison dart frogs from Central and South America. This is Phyllobates terriblis, the most toxic of all, and of the 170 to 200 species of poison dart frogs that have been described in the world, only three species have actually been used for poisoning dart tips, and those are the Phyllobates frogs, and they contain exactly the same poisons as our Pitahui birds in New Guinea. Not similar, but exactly the same. And in fact, in, in the year 2000, along with our colleagues from National Institutes of Health, we described several new toxins that we found only from the birds. And when they went back to the old frog poisons, they were able to find some of those same poisons uh, in the frogs as well. So it appears as though they're using exactly the same poisons as these uh, Phyllobates frogs.